100 days of Minecraft in creative mode. Now, if you guys are new to my channel, I'm usually the kind of person that likes to beat Minecraft in really challenging ways. So I thought it'd be pretty fun to actually try to survive in Minecraft for 100 days in creative mode, since I don't really use it that often. So going into this, some things that I want to be able to do in this 100 days is to obviously beat the dragon. But I also want to do some big builds, like building out a kingdom. And honestly, I, I, I don't know how that's going to go. But if you guys do go on to enjoy this video, make sure you guys smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and hit subscribe because at the time of releasing this video we're on our way to 1 million subscribers so join the paul gg army and let's get on to this 100 days of creative mode day one even though i'm in creative mode i still pretty much have the same priorities i would normally have in, in a, in a survival sur survival world which is find a good place to live so i just spent the entire first day just flying around trying to find a good plot of land i passed through lots of different biomes i even found a tall birch forest which i'm pretty sure is supposed to be rare but this is disgusting so i left afterwards i found a village where i gave an iron golem the smackdown because i have the almighty creative mode powers now but then some kid ran up to try to stop the violence and again i had to remind him who's the one in creative mode afterwards i continued to mindlessly just fly around trying to find that perfect area to live in that is until I found this nice village inside of a forest and it actually had a nice big open area and right next to it. So I definitely think this will be the place we call home. Day two, I spent the entire day just chopping down trees and clearing out a big area so I could have all the room I need for building my future kingdom. Why am I so dumb? Day three, I realized that I need to establish who's the alpha in this world. So I decided to create an end portal and hop in. I could tell that the dragon has never seen a warrior capable of just flying around smacking end crystals. It was pretty obvious the dragon was getting a little scared. So I changed channeled my inner one punch man popped a strength potion and decided to punch the dragon to victory the dragon had some evasive maneuvers that helped it survive longer than i thought however we all knew who the victor was going to be considering I, I i'm in creative mode day four i started off by removing the end portal i built and then i continued to work on the pot of land i was going to need a pretty open and flat area because i wanted to build a decent sized castle as my home and towards the end of the day i realized how nasty all these little brown patches are so i tried replacing a bunch of the dirt blocks with grass so then the grass could start spreading fast and it's just, uh, it's just such an eyesore. <laughs> Day 5 to 15. I spent the entire time just building out my new castle where I will be ruling over this world. I started off by laying a foundation and I wanted the house to kind of sit up on a platform so I could look down on everyone. <clears throat> Afterwards, I experimented with a lot of different designs and patterns for the house itself. Yeah, honestly, you just can't beat stone or stone brick. And after a long... <clears throat> wow, that was a bad voice. <laughs> I'm a man. And after a really long building process, the house was completely finished. Then I started working on some accents like building out some windows putting some walls up you know give the house just a little bit more character and i'm not a master builder but honestly i think this thing kind of just turned into a vibe day 16 the house is looking pretty good but i decided to add like a little perch that sticks out the roof to add a little bit more flavor to the castle but after building it for the first time it just kind of looked really ugly so i tore it down and rebuilt it a second time and like i said i'm no creative builder but i mean it's still pretty pog day 17 i worked on the interior of the house built like a staircase to the second floor a kitchen, you know, all the normal housey things. Afterwards, I worked on the bedroom. And then I decided to make a chandelier so I can have a bunch of lamps and try to prevent mob spawning. Because honestly, creative mode or survival mode doesn't matter. Mobs are super annoying inside the house. Day 18, I noticed that there was a raid tower not too far away. So I flew over and started clapping some pillagers and got bad omen. And then I checked the chest at the top of the raid tower and it was honestly kind of dookie. That's also when I noticed that there was a desert temple not too far away. So I jumped in it and quickly looted the chest. And then afterwards on my way home, I actually forgot that I still had the bad omen effect. So naturally that triggered a raid, but I'll have to deal with that in the morning because it's getting a little bit late. Day 19, it's raid day. You think since I'm in creative mode that it would make fighting the raid easier. Well, I mean it did, but it, there's still many casualties. I tried to also build some more iron golems to help protect the village, but for some reason it, it, it just wasn't working. I tried jack-o-lanterns, I tried shearing pumpkins, but yeah, I just, I just couldn't get it to work. So after fighting off many waves of the raid and having tons of different casualties, it was finally over. Day 20, after fighting that raid, I realized I can actually go to a woodland mansion. So I worked on leveling up a cartographer so that he could sell me a woodland mansion map. Afterwards, I decided to upgrade a netherite sword just so that I could be super OP when I get there. Day 21. Uh, yeah, nah, I just spent the entire day flying. <laughs> it honestly should be illegal how far away these woodland mansions are. And on the way there, I actually got so bored that I grabbed an elytra and some fireworks just to make the trip a little bit more enjoyable. Yeah, I guess it was all right because on the way there, I also found a snow biome and an ice spikes biome. But either way, on day 22, I managed to finally find the woodland mansion it turns out that it's it's right next to a village 
<laughs> those, those poor villagers. Either way, I went through the entrance like a normal person and started running through it, fighting all the mobs. I've wanted to raid one of these for a while since I've been playing on the ocean only world and I don't have the luxury of woodland mansions. So I took my time going through this. I also wanted to find some secret rooms, but honestly, there, there wasn't really that many. All I could find is one with a spider spawner and a bunch of cobwebs. So after finishing up with the woodland mansion, I just spent the entire day of 23 just traveling home. It's, it's really far. Day 24 to 26. I decided that before I start working on my kingdom that I should start claiming all the land that I was going to need. So I started building up a wall surrounding my territory so that all the villagers can be jealous of how pimp chimpin we are over here. And honestly, it kind of looks pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Day 27, I decided to make some overpowered enchanted netherite armor. There really wasn't much of a reason other than to look cool. And that's, that's kind of all I got noted for this day. Day 28, I spent the entire day just chopping down trees and clearing out a space because I wanted to make some beacons. Honestly, I hate chopping down dark oak trees because all the leaves take forever. So I'm just going to burn them down. Anyways, after the trees were gone, I started terraforming the land a bit to create a nice flat area. Day 29 to 32, I began building up a temporary beacon. I kind of refreshed my memory on how these things are shaped. Good thing I did this because I actually built it wrong the first time. Afterwards, I started constructing a platform for all my beacons. I experimented with a couple different designs, but ultimately decided to just steal the one that Wadzi made for all of his beacons. It's just a nice, simple pyramid shape. Honestly, I think it looks pretty awesome. It adds a nice touch to the kingdom. Day 33 to 34, somehow I never noticed Notice, but there's actually another village right next to my house and since i don't need two villages i wondered what it would look like if i destroyed every single building in the village but i left everything that's inside the house i don't know why i was picturing that it'd be really funny so that the villagers can still sleep and live there but technically there's nothing nothing there but after spending an entire day just punching away at houses i figured it'd be way more entertaining if i just blew up the entire village so i came back the next day and slapped some tnt on every single house and i linked it all together too just to to make this beautiful explosion. Honestly, I didn't expect it to just completely wipe out the entire village, but hey, it works for me. Day 35 to 36. I asked my friend A Cookie God what I should build in this world, and his his response was uh, some crusty toes. So I decided to add him into the video and expose how weird he is. And instead, I just decided to build a giant cookie for him. I've never really built a giant vertical circle. Cir I've never really built a giant vertical circle like this before, but honestly, just thinking about a cookie is getting me a little hungry. Hi, Paul. It's me, your pizza person again. I broke in your home and have been living in your fridge. Sorry, bro, I ate all your food. I lost my job for giving out only 27.5% of pizzas. Not the best move on my part. If you want to help me out, please sub to Paul and I can get my job back. Also, Paul will finally have his whole pizza. Anyways, after filling in that entire cookie, I started adding a bunch of chocolate chips. And I think the cookie is trying to tell you guys something. Maybe, maybe you guys uh, should listen to him and uh, everyone everyone should subscribe. Or else you're going to end up just like this cookie, just burning alive. Well, I guess not not alive. It's it's a cookie that's also not even really... Eh, never mind. Day 37 to 40. Wandering Trader actually showed up. And he had some terrible trades on him. So I got rid of him and decided to keep his llamas. And I don't know why at the time, but looking at his llamas made me think about making a farm. So I decided to make some farmland just outside of the kingdom so that it looks like we're eating good over here. But after working on the farm for a little bit, I realized that I wasn't using another ride hoe. So I flew back home and with my superpowers, whipped one up. Afterwards, I kept hard at work on this farm. That is until I heard some weird noises coming from a water cave underneath it. It actually turned out to be an oxalotl. Oxal, uh, axel, uh, I don't know how to say it. Oxalotl, that's what we're going with. I keep forgetting that I'm playing on the 1.17 snapshot. So after finding that thing, I decided to dump a bunch of them inside the farm pond. Afterwards, I started fencing in the entire farm so that the oxalotls won't be able to escape. And then I started planting tons of potatoes because it's actually just the best food in the game and I don't care what you guys say. After finishing it up and taking a step back, I decided that the fences were looking a little bit ugly. So I replaced it with a bunch of stone brick and some cobblestone and some miscellaneous stone walls. I think the staggered messy look actually makes the farm look better. And honestly, after doing that change, I think this thing actually looks pretty good. Day 41 to 42. Next thing on the to-do list was I wanted to make a giant nether portal because I realized I haven't even gotten into the nether yet. So I decided to build the entire thing completely out of blackstone and basalt because honestly, it just, it'll make it look 
look more intimidating. I haven't really done another portal this big in a while, so I mean, I was really taking my time with it. While I was building it, I was actually getting some World of Warcrafty vibes. I got any uh, any wow heads inside my comment section? No, just me. All right. Anyways, after building out the portal, I decided to give a little bit of character by adding some Nether Wart and Soul Sand outside of it. After that, I added a bunch more Blackstone on the ground because honestly, it's looking pretty pog. But the most important thing after finishing this thing off was what's on the other side of that portal, which there actually turned out to be a treasure bastion not too far away, but otherwise no fortress. So you could say this portal's kind of meh. Day 43. I realized that the back side of my house actually has a little river going by it. It stretches out pretty far throughout the forest too. So I decided to build a little staircase that'll go all the way from my kingdom down to a private dock. But not long after building it up, I realized that it was too tall and I, I didn't build it low enough. So I had to tear it all down and rebuild it again. But this time it's looking rather schnazzy. Day 44 to 46. I started off the day by tearing down a birch tree that snuck into my kingdom. Then I went to go slay a creeper that was hanging out near it. But I realized at some point I must have gotten rid of my sword. So instead I grabbed a strength potion and just gave it the hands. Afterwards I decided it's about time I start expanding my kingdom and building some new homes. Honestly while building up this house I decided that this is by far my least favorite build I've ever done. Don't worry my kingdom's not gonna look completely ugly like this house later. But while building this I actually did remember that there is tinted glass in the game now. So I replaced all the windows in my house with some tinted glass and decided to use the blue ones on the more dukier house. And after finishing up with construction I worked on the interior a little bit and honestly yep no this is still not good I just I, I ain't gonna front about it this is just an ugly house. Day 47 to 50. I decided to add a basement to my home where I would just have all my brew stands and brewing materials. But first I had to clear out the entire area and that was a that was a lot of dirt. But after shoveling all that dirt with my hands I decided to go with more of a blackstone theme since it's underneath the castle. And I wanted it to have kind of dungeony vibes. But I don't know honestly it's looking a little bit too dark. Maybe it's too much blackstone? I don't know. Comment down below. But I decided to add some windows with some lava behind it to add some light and a little bit of, a little bit of character inside her. I think it definitely helped a lot. Day 51 to 56. I decided I needed to continue flexing on this world with my strength, so I went over to my cartographer and got an ocean monument map so I could finally slay an elder guardian. And after doing some bartering, I gave him a sizable tip and it was time to set off. Now, judging by how small I am on this map, I already knew this was gonna be a very long journey. Man, I don't know why these things gotta be so far away. Anyways, along the way though, I did find a geoid, ge joid, ge the, the, the balls with amethyst. Somehow I keep forgetting that I'm on the snapshot. So naturally I grabbed some amethyst blocks and decided to start making some music. Then right after I actually found a mushroom biome, which I mean, they're supposed to be like the rarest biome in the game, I'm pretty sure, but hey, now we got one. And after flying forever, I finally showed up at the monument. So I quickly jumped in and tried swimming around to find an elder guardian. That is until I really got tired of just swimming around. So I started just placing tons of sponges everywhere, trying to clear out all the water, which definitely made it way more time consuming. But honestly, it just man my tolerance was just way better being able to walk around and it wasn't long until i found my first elder fish so naturally while he's flopping around i just punched him in the eyeball a lot and i'm pretty sure each monument has like what three elder guardians in here so i just continue to sponge my way through this thing and fight as many fish as i could and i know a lot of people have been commenting on my ocean only series saying that i should clear out one of these things and claim it as a home and i don't know honestly after doing this i'm pretty tempted to do it now but eventually after killing my last elder guardian so i just finished off my job here by clearing out the last of the water setting up some doors so that no one could come in but me and then i set off for the long journey home Day 57, I figured it's about time to start building out my kingdom finally. But I know it's going to be a very long and tough process, so I decided to pave some roads and divide the plots of land to make it a lot easier on me later. Day 58 to 93, whew, I began this massive construction process, building out this entire town. The first house I built was, I mean, it was it was kind of confusing. I don't know if it knew what it wanted to be. It was like kind of part castle, part house. I wanted it to have a chimney, but I wanted it to kind of look castle-y style. I don't know. Honestly, it just turned into a hot mess. Don't worry, not all the houses are going to be like this. Because actually, the second house might even be my favorite. The first house was just a warm up. And since the second house is right next to the entrance, I decided to make it more of like a tall watchtower style. And so far, the watchtower is definitely my favorite design. Oh yeah, and by the way, pro tip, if you really just want any house to look good, just start slapping a bunch of these trap doors, the spruce ones. Oh, those things. Mm -mm, chef's kiss. And like I said, I actually like this house so much that I even add a little small garden right next to it. Because I think it just deserved more land. Afterwards, I start working on the third house. I thought I had like a very specific vision for this house, but after I started constructing it, it just kind of turned into something else. Honestly, in a way, it just, it kind of, it kind of just looked like a church, right? Oh yeah. And then after finishing up with this house, I went and got some Starbucks and, and I left Minecraft open. So there went two days of Minecraft. 
but after returning and fully fueled up with caffeine, I decided to start building out a small stable area right next to my house. I know that some people might be saying, oh, you don't got a horse. Well, what's the point? Honestly, to that, I mean, I'd, I'd say fair enough, but I do have two llamas. So after I finished construction, I wrangled the two of them inside and gave them tons of food so that eventually they could become a big, thick boy like me. Afterwards, I started construction on the fourth house. I don't know why, but I really wanted this house to be that iconic castle-y looking kind of style. But while building it, I decided that I wanted it to also look kind of like it's been sieged or destroyed. So I figured the best method for this would to kind of build it all the way up and then kind of break it back down a little bit in some areas. And I think this one looks pretty solid. Comment down below, which of the houses are your favorite so far? But after the fourth house, the only plot of land left was the one across the street, which was a little bit too small. So I decided to turn it into a garden. And that's when I found out there were these new 1.17 flowers. They kind of just look like little bushes, which honestly turned out perfect for this. And then I planted a tree and I, I think it looks like a little vibey spot. You ever just get stressed out? You just come to the garden and start punching some bushes. But now I feel like my kingdom's finally coming together. I think it's looking pretty good. Day 94 to 96. I started off the day by saying hi to my llamas. You killed our master. We will burn this place to the ground and have our vengeance. After that, I decided to do some exploration in some of the new cave generation. But I figured that mining would be pretty boring, so I set up a TNT duplicator to do all the work for me. And what better place to set it up at than the raid tower? After I put it all together, all I basically had to do was slap a lever back and forth. And after tons of TNT later, I jumped on down and it was actually so far that we were already getting some of that deep slate stone stuff. It's the, the, the new stuff. Telling you that you're really deep in the world. That's also when I noticed the new ugly ore textures. Personally, just not really a fan. Comment down below, what's your opinion on the new ore textures? Anyways, I wanted to go deeper, so I flew back up and lowered the machine. By that, I mean I had to rebuild it and destroy the old one, so that the TNT could drop a little bit further. And then I went back down, and we were actually already at bedrock. So, for some reason, I decided to punch the bedrock, probably because I have the power to do so, and I actually almost fell into the void. And that would have been embarrassing, dying in creative mode. Day 97 and 98. Pretty much just spent my time punching my way through the walls and exploring caves. I actually found out that we've been on top of the stronghold this whole time. While exploring it and going through it, I actually managed to find some dripstone. And I wanted to try and slay a creeper with it, but honestly, it just, it, it just, it doesn't do enough damage. It was taking forever and I got impatient. And on that note, that was enough cave diving for me. But on day 99, I actually found the end portal room. So I figured that since I'm here, I might as well resurrect the dragon. So I filled in the portal with some eyes and jumped in. And then I spawned in some handy dandy end crystals. And then I began resurrecting the dragon. Honestly, why is it so dramatic? It always looks so crazy. <laughs> I decided that since I had so much fun with that TNT machine, then I would try to slay the dragon with it. So I set it up above the perch and got all ready. Afterwards, I flew around punching all the end crystals like a boss. And then when the dragon was ready to perch, for some reason, it just kept flying higher and higher until it actually hit my machine and destroyed it. And for some reason, it just got locked there. It was, it was honestly triggering me. I was so triggered that I actually just popped a strength potion and decided to give the dragon some hands again. Honestly, I just need to accept the fact that this is just the best weapon. And after a long, grueling fight, the dragon was slain yet again. And just in time for some B-roll on the 100th day. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was definitely way different than my normal content. And usually I don't spend much time in creative mode at all. So I had a lot of fun with this one. And if you guys also enjoyed it, make sure you guys smash that like button, hit subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.